Hello, Sonny. Your last name, Wayne? Who's asking? Who's asking? Who's asking? What do you want? I'd like to see your mother and father. What do you want with them? Just to see them. We're old friends. Ma? Ma? Ma, somebody's here. Bill. Bill Colton. Is that right, Scout? Oh, Colton it is. But not Lieutenant Colton or, or General Colton? Mustered out Colton. Civilian Colton. My gosh, Martha. Oh, I feel like throwing you up in the air, dancing a jig with you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Jamie, Mr. Colton's an old friend of your dad's and mine. A dear old friend. And he's been missed. He's been sorely missed. Oh, Lordy, Mother. You realize it's been at least eight or nine years? I was in Dakota when the uh, shotgun rider on the stage mentioned Ab's name to me. Told me you were living here. I just couldn't believe it. Ab's dead, Bill. He was killed this past spring. I, I wanted to write to you, but I didn't know where you were. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Oh, I've been doing everything from wearing a badge to driving cattle. I was on my way to Virginia City when I found out you were here. I'd like to stay for a day or so, if you got room. A room and a half. And not for just a day or so. For a week or a month or, or as long as you can stay. Jamie, I'll get a tub of hot water ready. You take Mr. Colton up and show him the guest room. You fighting the war, Mr. Colton? Like my dad did? Yeah, I was there, Jamie. I was there. Engineers? My dad was with the engineers. I know. I was cavalry. A favor, Bill? Take the gun off, will you? Yeah, sure. That's what you want. It's one of the house rules. No guns in here. No talk of guns. I'll put it away, Ma. No, Jenny, don't touch that. Put the gun away. You take Mr. Colton on upstairs. I'll get the hot water ready. Go ahead, Scott. Lead the way. I hope you'll excuse the way I talked to you up front, Mr. Colton. But with Paul gone, I kind of look after things to protect the house. I understand. Yeah, well, we're going to tend again tomorrow, Mr. Colton. We'll have built ourselves a keen tent out there. Regular army style. Can we? First thing in the morning. Tent, fortifications, the works. Now get to bed there, Scout. None of the kids believe that my dad was at West Point. They said I was just making up tall stories. But now I can introduce him to you, Mr. Colton, because you was there with him. I sure was, Jamie. I know fine man ever wore a uniform either, then I have no way. Would you tell that to the kids too, Mr. Colton? Be my privilege. You can come up and say goodnight to me, Mr. Colton. I'll call when I'm ready. Are you sure proud of his father? He's got good reason to be. He won't live like his father. And he won't die like him. Not if I have anything to say about it. He'll live to a ripe old age. He'll have no use for guns. He'll know nothing of violence. I swear to God, that's the way it'll be. Mother, how did Ab die? <sighs> a town bully, a gunman. With some delusions, some amorous delusions. About you? About me. I don't know why. I, I couldn't exchange a civil word with him. A dirty, tasteless man who offended me just by being close to me. But he... He got drunk one night and... and rode over here. And walked in through the front door. Ab wasn't here at the time. He he pawed at me and then then he hit me on the side of the face. When Ab came home, I had to tell it. Ab go after him. In a fury. An hour. An hour later, they. They brought my husband back to me, draped over a horse like a sack of meat. What happened to the man?
man who killed him. What difference now? I'd like to know. Well, he owns a cattle ranch outside of town. Comes in once in a while. Tips his hat to me when he walks by. Ab was... He was mustered out of the army six months before the war was over. He'd had a touch of yellow fever in New Orleans. I was so thankful he'd survived. We're a hopeful breed, we wives. A hopeful, wishful breed. But we'll leave it like that. That's all you wanted. In some errant moment, Bill, I want you to read your Bible. Read the part where it says, Thou shalt not kill. But skip an eye for an eye, huh? You've used your gun, haven't you, Bill? Have you made it your trade? I've used my gun when necessary. There are times when a man has to defend himself. You'll acknowledge that, won't you? I'll acknowledge no such thing. Mr. Colton, will you come up and say goodnight? I'm on my way. Bill, the only thing I require of you is that you don't talk violence to my boy upstairs. Don't tell him about the war or Indians or the things you've done. Don't paint any pictures for him. Don't plant any seeds in his head. Just give him a chance to live out his life. I'm waiting for you, partner. Coming, partner. He's a fine boy, mother. Fine looking boy, too. Looks like, uh, looks like his father. Not on the day he died. He was hit in the face with buckshot. Just say goodnight to him, Bill, nothing else. Mr. Colton? Yes, Jimmy? I hope you're aiming to stay around for a while. Well, as long as I can. Good night now, Jimmy. Mr. Colton? I hope this don't sound silly to you. But I kind of wish it was my pa now. I miss him. I'm sure you do. Mr. Colton? The man who killed my pa. His name is Gibson. If you ever run into him, I hope you pay him back. My mom don't know this, but if someone don't, I will. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Mr. Colton. Bill, can I get you some more coffee? Uh, no, thanks. I think I'll go for a little walk, if you don't mind. You won't need your gun. As you wish. A lady's time. Oh, you gave me a real close shave. <laughs> Fastest razor in the West. <laughs> ah, uh, just come in? Uh, this morning. Uh, looking for work? Uh, they're hiring hands at a couple of places. No, just passing through. Uh huh. Well, I. Uh... Uh, I was just telling the stranger here that uh, you was looking for help over at your ranch. Could always use some good men. What's your name? Colton. Mine's Gibson. What's that for, Gib? Trying to palm aces. I didn't palm no aces. I drew the two and I picked two. I swear to that. <laughs> well then, no harm done, Georgie. Just don't give me cause to crack your face. You want in, Mr. Colton? I doubt it. Friendly game. Yeah, I see. I say it's a friendly game. You take issue with that? 
You wouldn't want me to take this personal, would you? I don't care how you take it. You don't wear a gun, Mr. Colton. You're fortunate, because if you were wearing a gun, you would have run out of time by now. Catch your blessings, Mr. Gibson. You don't have a monopoly on the use of a gun. Next time, Mr. Colton. Next time, Mr. Gibson. Ain't you branded today, Gip? Finished yesterday afternoon. What do you ask? You don't want me in here drinking? Quit your fun at Gib. Honor to have you in here. Real honor. You, uh, seen Abner Wayne's wife recently? You mean his widow? Yeah, his widow. Funny thing about that woman. I can't get her out of my mind. You do see her, do you? Shopping on occasion, or her kid. Uh, they got a house guest now. A house guest, huh? Who? You know him. Met him in here last night. Colton? That's him. Seems like they're old friends. Old friends, huh? How old? And how friendly? Beats me. Except that he's staying there now. I seen him in town this morning with a little boy. They get on real good. In town? Where's that butcher shop now, Jamie? Ah. Well, looky who we have here. Colton, ain't it? That's... Forget about it, Jamie. Forget about it. Don't be in such a hurry, Colton. This is a social time in the afternoon. It's you and me. Have a friendly drink. I'm not thirsty. Or friendly. How well you know this boy's ma? Quite well. I know her quite well myself. Very pretty lady. Don't you talk about my mother. Why not, boy? If she had any sense in her, she would have taken me up on my offer. A young, attractive woman shouldn't live alone. You agree with me, Colton? If the alternative is having to live with a pig-faced killer, I'd say she was well advised to live alone. Colton! A very unsociable man, Colton. Talk big, too. I think it's time we had a drink together. And I'll let you talk some more. Come on, Sonny, let's go across into the saloon. You, me, and this big, brave man that your mama sends out for errands. Don't mess with Mr. Colton. <laughs> Don't mess with Mr. Colton. Don't mess with Mr. Colton. Mr. Colton himself. Well, I'll tell you something, Sonny. If I mess with Mr. Colton, it'll take just about five minutes of my time. 30 seconds to stiffen him and just about the length of time it takes me to drag his body across the street to the funeral parlor. All right, friends, we're going for a drink. Now. Now! Come on, Jamie. Whiskey. My friends here will have uh, sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla? Ask him. Is that what you're having? Two sarsaparillas. <laughs> well, 
Drink hearty, gentlemen. Very refreshing, ain't it? Just one other thing, laddie. Friend's boots there look a little dusty. Use this. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm expecting, mister. I'd love for you to make a move. You had your chance to play poker. Now you gotta play something else. Okay, boy. Pour that swill on your friend's boots. Do it, Jamie. Do it. <laughs> How tall are you now, mister? But speak loud so I can see you. You're so little, you're, you're hard to find. Sure, Jamie. Get your gun now, huh, Mr. Colton? Get your gun and stand back. I don't think so. Let's just leave it as it is, huh? Come on. Here's his room. Jamie! Jamie, come down here. Jamie, come downstairs. What's happened, Jamie? Please tell us. Mr. Colton, you're not like my father. You're not like him at all. He had to, he had to get killed. But I can feel proud of him as long as I live. I can feel proud of him. But not of me, is that what you mean? You're a coward, Mr. Colton. That's what you are. I wish, I wish you'd get out of here. Jamie. He is, and I'm glad he's not my father. I thought I wanted him to be, but I'm glad he isn't. My father's dead, but at least I can be proud of him. Where'd you put my gun? What do you need it for? To satisfy a little boy you'll go off killing? Mother, you've done a good job with that lad. You've taught him decency and respect, and you'll never lack for his love. But you've done one disservice to his father's good name. And that's what? You forgot that elusive requirement for manhood. That thing a man calls honor. To wear a gun and to use it. Is that what you call honor? To know right and to know wrong. And to stand alongside one and face the other, that's what I call honor. There's one thing worse than a violent dying, Martha, and that's to be afraid of it. Now, may I have my gun? Jamie. <laughs> One of us will have to use it. Let's hope not anyway. Now give me that gun. You gonna run away again? Not this time, Jamie. Not this time.
late to be sociable now, Mr. Gibson? Never too late. A short time ago, we played by your rules. An unarmed man and a small boy. Now it's just two men with the odds even. Those are my rules. You know something, Colton? There are some men I take pleasure in killing. You're one of them. You know something, Gibson? I doubt that. I doubt that very much. I think you take pleasure in killing an ant. I think you take pleasure in any kind of murder and mayhem invented. I think you're a bully with a hunger for bloodletting. But you're also a filthy piece of garbage. You shouldn't be allowed to use anything more dangerous than a fork and spoon. Gibson? Let's hear it. Tell Joseph. Sarsaparilla. just died, Martha, and it was a very clean death. I'd like to thank you for what you did, Mr. Colton. I'll tell you something, Jamie. It's too bad that I had to do what I did. Maybe someday there'll be a new breed of man. Your breed. They won't wear guns. They won't have to. But it'll take some time and it'll take some doing. And it can only come after my breed is out of the way. Now, you look after your mother now, huh? Take good care of her. I will, Mr. Colton. I'll let you know where I am, Martha. Promise? I promise. I leave you in the best of hands, Mrs. Wayne. The very best of hands. You sure got nice friends.